A level chemistry quick test video on formulae and equations. So for this video I'm going to focus on balance and redox equations but I'm going to go through the method where you use oxidation numbers to do the balancing. So we've got an easy one to start with so if we just balance this the traditional way we'd need a 2 in front of the HBr and a 2 in front of the H2O. So it's quite straightforward but we're now going to look at it in a sort of slightly different way where we use oxidation numbers. And then this is going to hopefully be very, very helpful for equations that are more difficult to balance in the traditional way. So there's the equation again. And if we look at oxidation number changes, we've got negative 1 in the bromine at the start. We've got positive 6 in that sulfur. And then the bromine goes to 0. And the sulfur goes to plus 4. So the rule with oxidation number changes is they must match. So at the moment we've got a change of 1 for the bromine but a change of 2 for the sulphur. So basically that bromine needs to go up to 2 so we need a change of 2 to match with the change of 2 there. So the way we do that is we put a 2 in front of the HBr and then to just finish the balancing the 2 goes in front of the H2O. So here's three trickier ones to try. So if you want to have a go at those, pause the video and then play them when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so oxidation number changes in the first one. We've got minus 1 plus 6 going to 0 and 0. So we've got a change of 1 for the iodine but a change of 6 for the sulphur. So the 1, we need to multiply this by 6 so that there's a total change of 6 for the iodine. So now we can go ahead balancing it. So 6 HIs implies we need 3 I2s. So the oxidation number changes are done now. We just need to balance the waters with a 4. So the second one now, it's still a redox reaction, but it's actually disproportionation, where the same elements oxidized and reduced. So the chlorine starts at 0, goes to negative 1, and plus 5. So effectively we need this to be negative 5 to match with that change of plus 5 so we put a 5 in front of it. So we can go ahead and balance the rest of the equation now. So we've got 5 chlorines plus that one 6 or so 3 in front of the Cl2. We've got a total of 6 sodiums so we'll put a 6 in front of the sodium hydroxide and we'll finish off balancing the waters with a 3. Okay, so the final one now, so we'll run through the oxidation changes for the copper and the nitrogen. So it's 0, plus 5, copper goes to plus 2. Some of the nitrogen stayed plus 5, some changed to plus 2. So if we've got oxidation number changes of 2 and 3, the best thing to do is get the change up to 6. So if we multiply the copper nitrate by 3, so we'll put a 3 in front of that copper, that gives us a change of 6 for the copper. And if we put a 2 in front of the NO, that gives us a change of 6 for 2 of the nitrogens in the HNO3. So if we balance the nitrogens now on the left-hand side, put an 8 there, then all we need to do now is balance the waters with a 4. So oxidation numbers can be really, really helpful balancing redox reactions. 